Well, MPs are returning to their ridings for the holidays after a busy week in Ottawa. Let's get a look at the polls with CTV's Michelle Boyer and pollster Nick Nanos. Michelle? Thanks very much. Now time for Nanos on the numbers with our pollster Nick Nanos. Hey, Nick. Hey. It's been a busy week. Oh, boy. <laughs> I can say that again. Uh, job numbers down. How are Canadians feeling about the economy these days? Well, you know, it's interesting. Actually, things are quite fragile. You know, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, uh, the numbers came out in terms of uh, jobs lost or created in the last month. Over 70,000 jobs lost last month. It was the single largest monthly drop in over a decade. Wow. And uh, in, uh, over that same period of time, we released a survey that we did with uh, Bloomberg News. And, and, you know, we asked Canadians whether they think that the economy would be stronger weaker or whether there would be no change and you can see when you check out the numbers that by a margin of more than two to one Canadians are more likely to think that the economy will be weaker in the next six months so not a lot of I think it's sunshine. It's, I know it's winter time. Yeah. Not about uh, not a lot of nice snowflakes, at least. Uh, <laughs> why is that though? Why do you, why why is it trending downwards? Well, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the West. And, you know, if you're in the Prairie Provinces, you're much more likely to be negative mm -hmm. on the economy. We know that there's a lot of Western alienation right now. And you know, think of it this way: you know, the Prairies represents a significant proportion of the population, and they are not just angry. They're not just dour. They are negative about future economic prospects. What is, when we look at these job numbers that have gone down, there's all this talk about recession. Is that an indicator? Uh, it's definitely one indicator because as soon as people hear of a significant uh, drop in the number of people that are employed, they get start getting worried about themselves. And right now we're also dealing with the holiday season. Right. So, you know, it's one of those things where the holiday season for many Canadians, they're under financial pressure as they're kind of trying to reconcile things. But, you know, those numbers on the recession yeah. uh, are actually quite ugly. Uh, you know, when we ask Canadians, you can see that a majority of Canadians think that there is a likelihood of some sort of there being a recession in 2020, uh, which means people are buckling up uh, for tightening a, the belts, tightening the belts mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for the upcoming year. And when you see the numbers in the prairie provinces, it's up to three out of every four That's Canadians really, that live really in the prairie high. provinces. Is that because so much of it revolves around oil? I think a lot of it revolves around the resource industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with frustration that Western Canadians have, uh, especially if you're in Alberta and Saskatchewan, about pipelines and uh, bringing resources to market, and uh, that there's no bright news, at least on the, uh, on the economic front, when we're thinking about uh, the Prairie Provinces. So all of that in mind, what kind of families kind of look to the government for help, for you know, a steering a steering in these kinds yeah. of situations. You know, it's interesting. We just came off the speech from the throne, mm -hmm. and uh, it was pretty clear that the Liberals were focused on a middle class agenda and trying to help the middle class. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, all of the parties talked about the rising cost of living. Right. And uh, according to Canadians in a survey that we did uh, for the Globe and Mail, uh, families with children should be the top priority in terms of middle class, helping the middle class, and helping them cope with the rising cost of, uh, of living. Is that because it helps them spend more? Well, I think it because there's a fundamental problem, I think, that a lot of Canadians, Canadian families have in terms of just struggling to pay their bills. Yeah. You know, we saw Andrew Scheer talk about it. We saw Justin Trudeau, Jagmeet Singh, all of the major party leaders were talking about the rising cost of right. living. So it looks like the Liberals are trying to zoom in on that and uh, focus on families. I think it's going to be really curious to see who does come up with the best idea, especially now in this sort of minority situation, how they're all going to work together, because it was very, very predominant uh, during the election yeah. campaign. But who do Canadians think would be the best party to fix the problem? How about that? No one has a significant <laughs> advantage. You know, that's only three percentage points difference between the Liberals and the Conservatives on this, and, uh, and the NDP just tight on their heels after that. What this means is that when Canadians look at all the different choices, they don't see any one party mm -hmm. as connecting with the middle class and being able to help and kind of align their policies with the middle class. So, middle class, key battleground for 2020, yeah. and especially when it comes to families, and especially when it comes to people in the Prairie Province. You know, we were saying nothing happened this week at all. <laughs> nothing, oh. no news at all. <laughs> a little sarcasm. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's a lot of sarcasm. Uh, do you think the fact that USMCA got signed will help the, will help the Liberals? Well, it's not going to be bad for the Liberals, and it could also help Canadians in terms of their dour economic mood. Mm -hmm. Because if there's certainty in the relationship with the United States, Canadians just feel a little better about the future. All right, we'll have to wait and see.
Nick, thanks so much. Back to you guys in Toronto.